All right, so today we're going to go over lab eight, which is the free fall lab. It's the acceleration of gravity. So our goal today at the end of the lab is to actually calculate the rate of gravity. And then we're going to do a percent error calculation to see how close we are to the actual value. Remember, gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, so how are we going to do this? We're going to start with an apparatus that looks similar to this, and I'll show you some examples on the apparatus in a moment. Um, and what we're doing with this apparatus is we're going to place a ball up here. And it's actually um, a timer. So we're going to move a thumb screw on this apparatus. And when we turn that thumb screw, what's going to happen is the ball is going to fall. Once it starts falling, the timer is going to start. It is then going to hit a receptor pad on the floor. And once it hits that pad, the timer is going to stop. So what we're doing is we're timing how long it takes the ball to fall from this distance down to when it hits the receptor pad. Okay, so this is going to be our D. So let's look over at the table and see what data we're collecting and how we're going to manipulate that data. So this is a table similar to what you'll see on your sheet. We're doing three different trials and we're going to do three different heights. Okay, so that's the distance that the ball is falling from the moment that it's released to the time it hits that pad. Okay, so we'll have the distances here. For each distance, we're going to do the experiment three different times. Okay, so we're going to do it from one distance, one meter, and we're going to see how long it takes for it to fall. Then we're going to do it again at that same distance so that we can average our data and get better results. So we'll have three different times at the distance of one meter, and you will be calculating the average time by taking those three times and dividing them by three. Okay, so you'll add them together and divide by three. The last two columns on your chart, those are also columns you're going to be calculating. You'll be using the distance in meters to calculate here. And then you'll be using your average time when you calculate the t squared. So you're going to be squaring your average times for each of the trials. Okay, and this is the data that you're going to use in the equation um, that I have below. Alright, so you've seen this equation before. Okay, it's a non-zero velocity equation. And when we use non-zero, or sorry, zero initial velocity equations in um, free fall experiments, we change our a to g because gravity is the only thing affecting um, in free fall. So our a is now g. But we're going to solve for g because what we're trying to figure out is what's our value so that we can compare it to the actual. Okay, so we're going to rearrange to solve for g. So I need to get g by itself. Now remember this equation is the same if I write it this way. Okay, and what that's going to do is going to help me rearrange it a little bit easier. So what I need to do is I need to get g by itself. So I've got to get rid of the 2 and I also need to get rid of the t squared. So I'm going to start by getting rid of the 2. Since the 2 is in the denominator, I'm going to multiply this side of the equation by 2. Because what I'm going to get is 2 divided by 2, and they will cancel. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. So I'm also going to multiply this side by 2. So moving over here, what I have now is 2d on one side. On the other side of the equation, I have g times t squared. Okay, g is still not alone. I have to get rid of that t squared. So to do that, since it's in the numerator, I'm going to put it in the denominator. Divide by t squared so that it cancels. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do the other. So I'm also going to divide this side by t squared. So now I get g by itself on one side of the equation. And then I get 2d divided by t squared. And notice these are the two columns that you calculated in your table. So you will be calculating the rate of gravity for every trial and comparing it to the actual rate. All right, so the apparatus that we're using is going to be connected to a smart timer. So we're going to look. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the ball and we are going to place it in the apparatus. Okay, and there's a little pin here that you push in that you want to tighten against the ball. Oh, let me get it centered there. And there's a thumb screw on the back that I'm going to tighten so that the ball stays in place. 
okay? So now, before I drop the ball, I wanna make sure that my timer is set up correctly. So looking at the timer, I need to have it on time. So the red button until you get on time. The select mode until I get on stopwatch. And then for every trial, I want to press the start stop button so that I see that asterisk. That asterisk is telling me that it's ready and I can drop the ball. Okay, so the ball is in place. I'm gonna loosen the thumb screw. The ball is gonna fall and hit the pad. Once the ball is released, the timer starts. When it hits the pad, the timer's gonna stop. All right, so now the timer is saying 0.4497. So we're gonna repeat that two more times at this height because the distance that you see in the data tables is the distance from the bottom of the ball to the pad. So we do it three times at this distance. We are then going to increase the distance. Repeat three more times at that distance. And then again for each of the trials.